So my name is George Turner, uh, I'm 40 years old and I'm the co-founder and chief exec of Carney's Community. The main kind of what I see is one of the most important parts of the charity is the key work and the key work is it's based on, we kind of base it on what a good parent or a good family would provide for their child. So it's long term, it's, con it's um, consistent, it's unconditional support and it's empathy. Those are the, f the four key focuses. So the long term side of it is that it's, it we'll provide this support for however long it's needed. We talk about our virtuous cycle within Carnies, which is that everything we provide, we don't charge for to the, to the target group young people, but we always highlight to them it's not free. We want something in return. And what we want in return is that when you've sorted out any issues you've got, when you've overcome your struggles, we want you to do something positive back for society as well, whether that's through Carnies or whether it's through setting up your own organisation, doing some volunteering somewhere else, but we want you to put something back. Alongside the boxing, um, what happens is we will run the sessions for various age groups and for all under 18 age groups. After the session, we will get them next door and we'll run an hours long youth club or an hour and a half youth club. And when we first started doing that, we started to find out that quite a lot of the young people weren't, were either not getting dinner when they were going home or were getting something like a jam sandwich, but nothing substantial. And it really hit us in the school holidays because we realised that they also weren't getting school dinners. So they were very malnourished and what we, and we, wanted, to, we wanted to try and remedy that. So we started doing, uh, we, we started off with a volunteer actually who offered, who said, the lady said, why don't I just cook some spaghetti bolognese for them? So we were like, yeah, good idea. And we saw how much it benefited them and we, we actually saw how much it improved their behaviour as well. So from there we started doing it after each session on a Monday and a Wednesday and we're now feeding around 50 kids each evening and we get food donated from City Harvest they go around and collect food that's just about to go out of date. We've got young people who've been charged with murder who spent significant amount of time in prison who, who've ended up coming out and making massive successes of themselves. We've got people who've, who've had spinal cord injuries and can't move from the chest down, who are now like top Paralympians and sportsmen and, and, and are living brilliant lives. So there's a way out for absolutely everyone. You can't help, whenever you look at anyone making a decision, you can't help but think, how would I have made that decision? But you're not that person, you've not walked in their shoes, you've not had that, their experiences, so you can't judge them for how they've decided to do something. It's the understanding that you can never really understand what it's like to be someone else because you can't, you can't walk in their shoes. You can, you can try and understand, you can try and kind of visualise, mentalise what, what life must have been like for them knowing the risk factors involved, but you can never truly know. So empathy is about trying to put yourself in their shoes, trying to look at, trying to, trying to look at things in the way that they'd look at things and trying not to judge them by, by standards that you might have. We've seen people who, who never believed in themselves and no one believed in them become highly, highly successful. So it's, it, it, anyone is able to do it. It can be difficult. You do need to kind of go out there and grind, but you are, you are able to do it. And if, if they want, come down here, speak to some of our participants, speak to some of our staff, and they'll see some real life ex examples of people who, who've made huge, huge successes in their life and have overcome real challenges and difficulties, which have ended up in a way for a lot of them being strengths for them because it's helped build them, it's helped strengthen them, it's helped them learn a lot of, lot of lessons that other people may not have learnt because they haven't had to go through situations like that. I've been doing this work for 20 years now and I've still not met one person that you can't see where that behaviour has come from, you can't see what's happened to that person in order for them to, to display that behaviour. It's very easy to, give up, easy to give up on people when they've made a mistake or when they've, or when they've done something to kind of break your trust. But if you do give up, you're just refueling them to not make a change in their life. For everyone that we've worked with who's, who's come through real troubled times, it generally, you can't, you, you're not going to change them straight away. You need to spend time in building relationships and showing them that you care and showing them that you're not going to reject them. They've had 
God knows how many people work with them before who, who, who've ended up closing the case or moving on. I mean, so I kind of love to pick on social services because there's so many people out there who are, who are very good social workers or, or who aim to be very good social workers, but I think the social work system doesn't necessarily work. Um, and part of the reason is because there's such a high turnover in social workers and it's very rare for, it's for a young person to have the same social worker for three months, four months, five months. And it's and then we wonder why young people don't respond to social workers and don't respond to professionals. If you've had loads and loads coming in and out of your life, why are you going to believe that the next one is going to be someone who's actually going to stick with you and who's actually going to invest that time and invest that time in the long term to support you? But when we first started Carnies and I was talking to some of the new staff and I was talking about some of the successes that we'd had before and they were saying, oh, well, I don't know what I'm doing wrong because I've, I've been doing this for a year and I'm not seeing any of those successes. And it's like, yeah, I, I didn't see, believe me, I didn't see any successes for a number of years. It takes time. You have to build that level of trust. You're not going to turn anyone around quickly. When you look at things like funding for, for organisations like ourselves, you've got a lot of payment by results funding. And the problem with payment by results funding is it leads to cherry picking. It leads to you making the best financial decision rather than the best kind of social decision. So for us, when we were asked to do it, it was around getting people into education. And we, we turned it down because we'd had two cases that we were working with. And the first one was a 12 year old who um, was excluded from school because he was caught smoking on the premises. So we had to try and get him back into school. The second one was a 12 year old who hadn't been in education for two years, couldn't read or write, had witnessed his dad being tied up with a shotgun put in his mouth, um, had broken his teacher's hand at the last school he was at, um, was under child and adolescent mental health services. So you've got those two young people now who does it make most financial sense to get back into school? It's going to be a lot easier and quicker to get the kid who's been smoking, who's been smoking back into school because he hasn't got all of those other risk factors. But if we do that, we're leaving this one to what, go off and get in how much trouble and neglect him. The drug services in prisons, you, you get, you, you're funded to, go, to get people in prison who are involved in drugs and alcohol back into employment when they come out. So what happens is the drugs worker walks straight past the habitual heroin user, straight past the habitual crackhead, and they go straight into the drink driver's cell. Okay, yeah, so you're a businessman, you work in the city, but you've been having some drink problems. Okay, cool, right, we'll start working with you because the likelihood of you coming out of prison, going into prison is, and going into work is very strong. The likelihood of the others, very weak, so we'll ignore those ones. That's what we've got to stop doing. It's those are the people that we really need to be supporting. They're the ones who, who generally have been through the worst things in their own life. They're the ones who need the most investment of support. One of the other benefits of doing the boxing that, that we've that we do. So whilst whilst we target disadvantaged young people, we try and be open to all. So we try and have around a third of the young people that come down and train. Um, to come from mainstream backgrounds and the reason for that is because we want people from different classes to mix and get to know each other and understand each other and to get to support each other um, and we want people to learn from each other as well. I mean one of my kind of key frustrations is you look at things like pupil referral units if a young person gets excluded from school they get put in a pupil referral unit with a load of other young people who've been excluded from school and then you get surprised when the behaviour gets worse. You need them to be mixing with positive role models. That's, that's what they need to be mixing with, not people who are getting in trouble. So we want people to learn different skills from each other and have, get different understandings from each other. Humans generally once they understand someone's been through something terrible they will want to support they're not humans don't naturally just say i want to look at you as being the bad person and that's all i want to know about they there is empathy we just need to give them the opportunities to have it and need to educate people on it a lot of the a lot of the issues is is, is ignorance My name is George and this is my voice.